What's up everybody, it's Simon from Lake Hub. I love our lakes, but sometimes you just gotta get salty, right? So Chris and I just took a trip down to the Gulf Coast and we caught some fish. Let me tell you what, uh, I caught this keeper speckled trout right here. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. It was so much more fun than I thought it would be. Caught this one on live bait. We were uh, fishing with croakers, uh, live croakers about yay big, you know, maybe three, four inches, something like that. Uh, hooked a couple different ways. Uh, we went with Captain Jesse, Jesse Torres out of Corpus Christi. Captain Jesse, he grew up on Corpus Christi Bay and man, he knows his stuff. He put us on some fish. He put us on some big fish and a lot. I mean, we, we were catching fish, you know, all day. It was a little bit hard hunting there middle of the day, kind of when, you know, full sun and all that kind of stuff, full sun, tides not really playing. Uh, there were some hard fish in there for a while, but then we got back into them. Uh, it was, gosh, it was just so much fun. So we started off the day fishing a weed line, right? <clears throat> Way back in Baffin Bay. And, uh, and so we're, we're talking, you know, a foot and a half, two feet of water. Uh, and speckled trout will just sit there in the weeds and ambush like a largemouth that early in the morning. So, so first thing in the morning, that's what's happening. And I'll show you the rig here. This is, uh, this isn't exactly the rig, but this is the hook. And then I'll describe how Captain Jesse had us rigged up, which I thought was kind of odd at first, but I'll tell you what, it worked. So we have this huge circle hook, right? And uh, in this case, we've got a snell knot on it just because it's got that bent eyelet right there, the bent shank right before the eyelet. So that makes a really good spot for a snell hook. Um, what he had was he had a bead and then a bullet weight and then a bead. So it's basically like a saltwater Texas rig is what it amounts to. And live croaker off the bottom, braided line, uh, fluorocarbon, uh, leader, short fluorocarbon leader, about like that. And he, he liked to hook the bait through uh, basically the beginning of the tail. So the way Captain Jesse put it was you look at the anal fin and then the lateral line, which is like the line that goes along, you know, the, the whole side of the fish, you know, if it's the bait fish, it'd be, there's like a thin pin line that goes like that. And then anal fin right there, boom, hook it right there. And that gives kind of a natural, you know, once it's on the bottom, fish can still do this, try to get in the weeds. You kind of have to bring them back a little bit when you feel them do that. And that just entices a strike. Uh, these remind me on the West Coast, uh, there's a fish called Corvina. And I didn't realize how close, they must be in the same family, I haven't looked it up, but I didn't realize how close, uh, you know, sea trout are Corvina. But we, kept, we caught them on live bait, we caught sea trout on uh, croakers off the bottom, shrimp off the top uh, with like popping corks, uh, artificials, different swim baits and stuff, fishing weed lines, fishing little sandy pockets, right? You see a bunch of seagrass with a kind of, kind of lighter, a lighter area in the middle. You know, there's, there's a little sand bed right there and, you, and same deal, you know, it's, we're talking about an ambush attack here. Um, shrimp, artificial shrimp on jig heads, you know, gulp shrimp, things like that. Uh, just drifting through the channel as the, as the tide's coming in and out. Great time. Such a great time. Small fish, big fish. You know, we rigged some up, some smaller jigs up on lighter tackle. That was a ton of fun. It's a little bit dangerous when you're fishing saltwater that way, because you could, you, at any given point in time, you could hook a big fish. You just don't know. Um, so, uh, I'm going to show you how to, so that's, that's how we caught them. I'm going to show you how to, how to clean them too. Uh, now full disclosure here, this is my first time cleaning speck, speckled trout, but I'm going to show you some principles of cleaning fish and I want to make sure that you understand how to clean fish. Um, and then I'll show you how I'm going to clean this fish. We'll work through it together. Uh, so, uh, you, you notice that it's already gutted and beheaded. I did that because we were traveling and so had to get the guts out wanted to set this video up properly so that I can show you, you know, how to clean it. Uh, but, and all he did to gut it was cut the head off in kind of a C 
shape. You can see that right there. There's a reason for that. And then slit the belly open. You just you turn the blade inside out. So you're cutting this way. I gotta get my flay knife. Uh, yeah, I'll pause for a minute here and get my flay knife out because I'm unprepared. So you go in with the blade sticking out and then, you know, you have to chop through. Usually you have to, as the bigger the fish, the more you're gonna have to chop through, you know, these, this kind of little breastplate here between the, between, between the front fin fins, pectoral fins. And then you just slit and got them open. And once you, once you get it going, it's super easy. This is, this is really, th you know, thin belly section here, belly meat and slit it all the way down to the anal, anal fin. And then just pull the guts out. Um, the inside looks a lot like a rainbow trout or, you know, river trout, lake trout. Uh, so you just cut, same thing, you'll have a bloodline, just like a trout, like a, like a freshwater trout. And so you just cut, cut this bloodline and then use your finger, kind of scrape it all out and then just blast it with water. And that's it, that's pretty much how you get it. Now the reason why I do a C like this um, when I'm taking the head off is instead of just chopping straight down is because this right here, this part of the fish, this is the thickest meat. I call it the shoulders. I don't know. There's probably a technical term or like, you know, a culinary term for it. I don't know. Um, but I could tell you there's a lot of meat up here. So I want to save as much as I can. And so that's why I start, I push, push on the top of the fish's head until I feel meat. And I'm like, okay, right there. That's it. I start cutting right here and then work my way around the gills behind the gill plate, um, behind the, the fins, the, the side fins here, and then cut back out like that. Now you could, you could just go straight down right there because this meat, there's, there's a little, there's a little chunk right here. Now, this is a bigger fish, but you know, a lot of times this belly meat, you know, this is basically like the skirt steak, you know, it's going to be this really thin, flat, uh, meat. This can be hard to handle. It's gonna be hard to cut. It's gonna be hard to cook. Uh, so some people, they don't even save it. It's really up to you. There's, you know, two schools of thought. doesn't matter what, uh, you're cleaning wild fish and game. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a, if it's a duck or a goose or a deer or a hog or a squirrel or a dove, some people are going to go through the extra effort to get every little bit of meat, you know, one just for the enjoyment of it. Um, two out of, you know, full total respect for the animal. You know, you don't want it, you don't want anything to go to waste. Uh, but some people, it's just the juice ain't worth the squeeze, right? And I go back and forth. I've cooked whole dove before, um, just for funsies. It's a, it's a whole thing. But if, if you shoot a limit, I mean, you've got 15 birds to clean. It's going to take you hours. It's going to take you hours to pluck and gut every single bird. Uh, it's just not practical. So you take the breast meat out, that's like 80% or maybe even 90% of the meat anyway. And it takes you 20 seconds a bird, you know? So, um, usually the difference between getting most of the meat and all the meat that last 10 or 20% is a lot of work. So a lot of people just don't do it and you know, live and let live. That's, my, that's my philosophy. Live and let live. If, if you're going to waste a little bit of meat, no hard feelings for me, you know? If you're going to use all of it, then cool. I love it, man. Respect, you know, that's really cool. That's what it's all about is like taking the extra time. I mean, you're taking all this time to go chase the, the critter in the first place, all this time and energy and money and, you know, brain power and blood, sweat and tears. And so take that little extra time to cook all the meat, you know, why not? That's, that's part of the whole thing. It's part of the whole spectrum of it. So just enjoy it. Don't look at it as a chore. So I'm going to grab my fillet knife. I'm going to adjust the camera so you can see a little bit better and we'll get after it. Okay. We're all set up and ready. Now you can see I've got a place to put the meat. And, uh, unlike Chris, Chris likes to have a trash can on hand, which is really handy if you want to do that. Here's what I do with my waste. Uh, anytime I've got a big, you know, gallon or bigger Ziploc bag that I've used up and I'm going to throw it away. I roll it up and I put it on the bottom shelf of my freezer. And then anytime I've got some waste, so you can see there's some bread or something in here. Anytime I've got some waste, I pull one of these out. It doesn't matter what was in it before because I'm going to throw it out. So I'll put the carcass in here, zip it up, 
I'm gonna roll it up and stick it in my deep freeze and wait till trash day so it doesn't stink up anything. So that's my process for getting, uh, getting rid of waste. Of course, if you've got, if you're like deboning a deer or something like that, then uh, there's gonna be a lot more to work with. Then you go with the trash can method. And, uh, and then you do that closer to, to uh, trash pickup day. So you don't have to worry about it. So I've got my, my meat receptacle, I've got my waste. I've got two knives. I've got this one just in case I need to chop through any bones because there's some pretty stout bones on here. Um, I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna be using that, but I do have, well, play a knife. This thing's been through a lot. Uh, first thing I do is I have this pocket. Uh, let me see if you can get close here. This is a little pocket sharpener. So there's two ceramic um, sharpening stones in there. These things are, are really inexpensive and super handy. I keep one of these in my fishing bag. I keep one of these in my hunting pack just because they're so handy. And all you do is you just run it through. Let me get close so you can see this. You just pass it through a few times. You don't need to press down too, too hard, just a little force. I run it through about five times. And I've got a really, really good edge on my old knife. Uh, it's got a flat bottom here. So, so the safest thing to do is use this little grip right here straight down so that you're not, you know, doing it up in the air. So that's the safer thing to do. That's the very first thing I do. I'm not going to do that to my chef's knife because this is a stout knife and I don't hardly, that's got a factory edge and uh, a warranty so that I let the factory sharpen it whenever it needs sharpening. So I'm not going to touch that one. I may not even need this one. I'm going to put it over here. I've got my raw meat cutting board. Um, you can see, put this up. It's kind of funny. Um, my loving wife and I had some disagreements about which cutting boards to use for what purposes, and then we kept getting confused. So I took my uh, pyrography, you know, wood burning tool, burn raw meat on this one, and there we go. Now we're all on the same page. We use this cutting board only for raw meat. It's the big one, so it's like ribs, brisket, fish, all that kind of stuff. And it's only raw meat goes on here. Alrighty. So I'm right handed. I'm gonna work kind of the other way. So we've got this big kind of flap of billing me right here. Um, I think the first thing I'm gonna do here is cut the fins off. So I'm just gonna give a little cut here. I'm gonna start my, my waste bag and open it up. Now Chris had that good idea of putting it in a bowl. That's really helpful. You can also just do this and open it up. There we go, I've got myself a little trash can. Now, so the, the general idea here is that you want to, there's, there's some ribs right here that go from here to here. So short little ribs that kind of curl like that. And then that, that's kind of a shelf for all, the, all this meat to sit on right here. So we'll need to cut in and around those ribs right there. And then there's the backbone, like the spine and, and all the vertical ribs that, you know, basically go up into these fins here like that. So they're going to be going up and down. So we'll have to cut around this and then up and down. And I actually like to start, start here. Um, and then, you know, same idea. We're going to flip it over. We're going to leave some attached right here because that'll hold it for us so that we don't have to pin it down. And so let's get started. These, these scales, um, I mean, in trout, in, in trout style, these are smaller scales. You can see how small these are, hopefully. There we go, focus buddy. Well, you get the, the idea. Um, so these are pretty small scales. I'm not worried about descaling anything like that. I know my knife can kind of power through, especially up here. So we're gonna start with a cut right at the top. And we're just gonna kind of cut to be able to get it started. There we go. So now I can do some kind of longer stroke cuts. I'm going right along the top here. Visually, I can see it. I'm using my other thumb to keep it out of the way, but to pull the meat up, that allows us to work a little bit better. So here's what's going on. Now we've got a nice little opening here. I'll keep it going. I'll kind of flip it up here so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm using the full length of the blade here, cutting down to those rib bones that, that curve out. And we're just getting it off the spine. I'm getting as close as I can to waste as little meat as I can. Kind of little kind of strokes 
I can feel the tip hitting the ribs now. So we've gotten all the way down. And don't worry about the scales. We're going to rinse this all off. There's scales are just going to come off. That's part of it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about that ruining anything. We'll rinse everything off when we're done. There we go. So I got down to the tail. I don't want to cut through the tail yet. I just got through here and I stopped right here just to make sure I don't cut too far because that's going to help me. Alrighty. So we've got, we've got it off the spine here. We've got this nice, deep, consistent cut right here. Now I can feel with my fingers, I'm reaching down here, I can feel with my fingers that there are some rib bones sticking out here that we need to cut around. So I'm just going to use the tip of the knife. I'm going to cut around those so that those don't travel with the meat. I kind of got a little inside of them here. And don't worry about wasting little chunks of meat like that's just going to happen. Don't beat yourself up about it. Just do the best you can to get the most you can. And that's all we can do here. All right. Professionals are going to be using, you know, two or three or maybe even four different styles of knives. Um, this is the only true, you know, fish cleaning uh, knife that I have. Uh, besides my kitchen knives that can help us out in a pinch, but, um, you know, Bubba blades, uh, Bubba makes some really good, really good blades, especially for saltwater fishing, because you're going to be dealing with just bigger fish in general than freshwater. So unless we're talking huge catfish, uh, so here you can see, all right, we've got, you can see the rib bones kind of coming out here. So we're going to cut down and around those. Always be mindful of where, what direction you're cutting, what direction your other hand's at. Don't force anything and always ask yourself if this knife slips, what's going to happen. So we're going to leave, there's a little chunk right here, but it's kind of attached to the ribs and I'm just going to leave that. We're going to do the best we can cutting this out right here. So if you, if your hand slips, where's that knife going? Is it going into your other hand? Then stop what you're doing and adjust. All right, so just kind of feeling it. I'm starting right here, feel the top of it. I'm kind of doing like an arc kind of cut, getting it as much as I can off the ribs here. There we go, and the rib bones will stop generally about kind of this area, generally speaking. I'm gonna make a slit along here to keep this, keep this bottom of this filet going. So I'm gonna work this to the tail now. There we go. That's good stuff. All right. So we're almost there. We're almost there on this one. Keep going. You can see it's not a little, a little choppy here. You know, that's an amateur job right here. A professional fish cleaner is going to look like, like really clean, you know, grocery store cut of meat. And I think we're just about there. I think I'm going to leave it. It's kind of a judgment call, you know, like how much you leave to hang on to. You want to get as much as you can. There's a little, little bit of meat right here, but you, can, you have to leave a little bit of skin on to help you hold it. All right, I'm going to get stop right there. So there we go. There's, there's a little bit of meat right here. Everything else is cleaned off really well right here. All right. So now we skin it. I'm going to use this to kind of help me because this fish is bigger than my cutting board. All right. I like going the other way because I'm right-handed. I like going like this, but for the sake of the video, we're going to do this. So you make a cut really flat, flatten your blade out and you'll feel when you hit the skin, you can kind of pull it up and see too, like where's the skin at? Cause you don't want to leave any meat on the skin. So you, this is where this, this style of knife, it's thin and flexible. This is where the flex comes in handy. So I'm pushing down so the blade is flat and it's curving up a little bit right here to the handle. I'm using that pressure and it's going to stay on top of the skin without cutting through. That's where this knife gets awesome. All right. I'm going to hold this down with my thumb and I'm kind of blocking the view a little bit. 
but we'll keep working it. Some people are really good at this part. I take my time because I'm not, I'm not as slick as those folks are. There's some people, man, when you, when you see someone who really knows how to clean a fish, they just work through this part so fast. It's a, it's a thing of beauty to see that level of skill. I love that. This is a pretty darn good job for me though. I can tell you that. So we're even getting some of the skinny belly meat right here. You can see that. So it's working. Uh, we're going to use the full length of the blade right here. The fattest part, tallest part of the fish. We're going to keep holding this down. We're going to back it forth. There we go. Oh yeah, that's looking good. I was so nervous about botching this on camera because this was the one keeper we had. But so far, I gotta say, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. There it is. This is what you like to see. Look at that. It's like a paper towel. It's like a wet paper towel. There is no meat left on that skin. So I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm gonna cut this off. That is good filet. That's about as good as you're gonna get from me. I like that. That's gonna be tasty. All right, our fish has been cleaned up. It's been rinsed with cold water, patted dry. It's ready to cook. Now we move to the stove. So I've got two pans going on. Uh, this one is a medium high heat. This is gonna be for heating tortillas. I'm gonna show you how to do it the right way after we get the meat cooking. And this one, which is gonna be medium heat, strictly medium. I can hold my hand right above it. This one's getting pretty hot. My hand's about right here, okay? So we're gonna get the meat on and then we'll cook some tortillas and then we'll flip the meat and we'll be done. This is a pretty short cooking cycle. First off, we're gonna start here. So for cooking the meat, I'm gonna start off with a lot of olive oil. This thing pours pretty slow, but I wanna cover the whole bottom of the pan and then be able to swish it around. So that's about how much I have here. I'm not deep frying, I'm sauteing, but there's enough, there's plenty of oil. When in doubt, add more oil. Here's what I'm gonna do. I've got some minced garlic. You can mince garlic yourself or you can just buy the canned stuff. I do both because I like to grow garlic. And so um, I do both depending on what I'm doing. If you mince your own garlic, it's not gonna splash and sizzle as much when you do this. Um, but this is super handy to have in the fridge. And I do this whenever I saute anything. So I take, I don't know, what do you call that? I'd say a light tablespoon or, a, you know, maybe two teaspoons or something like that. About a third of a spoonful right in the middle. It's not, so, it's not too hot, so it didn't sizzle on me, which is good. Because I just got this shirt and I like it. I don't want any splash back. All right, so I'm going to put this up. And then what we're going to do just kind of lightly get that around. Now what we're doing is we're infusing the olive oil with garlic. Oh, yes, the goods. Oh yeah, so you can see that's, we're not burning it. It's not too hot, we're not burning it. So we're gonna let that, we're just gonna let that go for just a minute here. Not even a minute, just a few seconds. Don't wanna burn it. I wanna get the meat on there before the garlic burns. All right, that's looking pretty good. So all that garlic is gonna simmer and cook and then it's gonna to stick to the meat too. That's gonna to be good stuff. All right, so we're gonna lay the meat in gently so we don't splash back on ourselves. You always wanna take care when you're frying. All right. Wash my hands real quick. So let me turn that up just a touch. I'm gonna to get some tongs out. I'm I imagine we're going to need a little bit of help with flipping. We'll see. Salt and pepper. Good old tried and true. And I'm going to add a dash of fajita seasoning since we are making some tacos. So this is a... Uh, Mexican meat market style fajita seasoning, but you can mix it up with some 
Lowry's meat uh, seasoning or uh, Tony Sachet's, you know, something like that. Just don't overdo it. Just a, just a little bit of a little bit of sizzle on here, a little bit of extra flavor. There we go. All right. Hopefully you can see that there. That's about how much we want. I might do a little salt on the other side when we flip it over. So we're gonna let this simmer. Just another tick higher, and I think we'll be good to go. All right, tortillas. Obviously these are pre-cooked. We can just eat them like this if we want to. Boring. Here's what you do. Pan's nice and hot, you can feel it. It's starting to smoke a little bit. Throw it on there, count to about 10. Flip it over. Move it around a little bit so it doesn't stick. Just keep doing that. Five, five seconds, 10 seconds. Grab it, flip it. What we're trying to do is a couple things. One, you don't want it crispy. Flip it before it starts getting crispy. So we're starting to get some extra spots here. That's some good stuff right there. So you're, you're hitting it with some high heat, getting a few extra spots. It's not getting crispy and it's starting to fill up with air. Look at that. Some darker spots. Oh yeah. I'm telling you, this will change your tortilla game if you heat them up like this. That one's looking pretty good. You can smell it. You can smell the, the cooking tortilla. When you smell that and it's pillowed up like that. Oh yeah. So here's the difference. Here's a fresh one. Flat as a tortilla. And you can see all the, all the air pockets in there now. That one's perfect. You can see it's still flexible. We'll still fold it up into a taco, but it's starting to get a little bit stiff. That is beautiful. Don't let it get hot because it'll get crispy. Move this oil around a little bit just so we get it nice and oily and we don't get burned. I'm gonna put a little oil on the top too. Again, can't overdo it with olive oil. Just keep it coming. All right, it's feeling pretty good too. Kitchen fingers. Gotta get those kitchen fingers, that's what my cousin calls them. All right. I'm gonna get this pan off the burner. And we'll check back in just a second to flip this over. All right, now it's time to flip the fish over. So very gently, gonna work my way underneath it, kind of break that tension. I've got a lot of oil in there, so that's helpful. Kind of wants to float a little bit instead of stick. So there we go, everything's ready to flip. Whoop, had one break off, didn't do it fast enough. Wasn't fast enough, and it folded over on me. So now, dad law, gotta give the tongs two clicks when you pick them up. That's a dad law right there, all right. Flip over these little nuggies. And then, same thing on this side. All right, ready? Woo, almost got it in one shot. And I didn't get any oil on my new shirt. So you can see how quickly this is cooking. It's already starting to fall apart. I mean, that's, like, that's some good stuff right there. So we're gonna swoosh this all around. I'm gonna give a little salt and pepper on the top. And we're gonna cook this thing until I can pull it apart with a spoon. See, I like, to, I like to season things in the pan a lot. I do a lot of stir frying and things like that. So I, I like doing this, all right. Little, I changed my mind on seasoning one side. We're gonna season both sides. It's gonna be good. Little, just a dash of heat of seasoning. This is gonna be like chili, chili powder and some other stuff. Oh, here we go. 
salt, MSG, spices, onion, garlic, and something that's been scratched off. While we're waiting for this to finish, I wanna show you my favorite taco hot sauce. Here it is, Taqueria street, uh, street sauce. The Roja is off the hook. This stuff is so good. This reminds me of Baja tacos. Like in Baja, not Baja style. I'm a taco purist. I don't like a lot of stuff in my tacos. I grew up on the border. That's just what I'm used to. Onions, cilantro, a little dash of Roja, and your meat. Let the meat be the star of the taco. Don't cover that up in sour cream and cheese and all this other nonsense. You don't need to do that. Let the meat shine. I'm glad that I chose the speckled sea trout or the speck as the meat to do the street tacos because the texture is just perfect. It's already falling apart. This is, this is just perfect. You know what I'm gonna do? It's already falling apart of me. I'm just gonna go the rest of the way here. All this stuff here in the middle, right here, this is all done. This is all done. You can see it's white all the way through. It's firm. That's a done taco right there. Put a little bit right here. All the rest, I'm just gonna flip this off and let it simmer in the warm pan. That's good stuff right there. A little dash of hot sauce. That's it right there. That's the stuff. You ready to try it out? That is good. Folks, that's a good fish taco right there. Speckled sea trout from the ocean to the plate. Gotta love it. I hope this was entertaining and useful to you. We will see you out there.